Hello, my name is Ryan Selby, and today we're going to talk about T-piece resuscitation, uh, more specifically the Neopuff uh, from Fisher and Paykel. Uh, what I have at the table today is a Neopuff, a portable model of a Neopuff, uh, a T-piece, ergonomic T-piece from Fisher and Paykel, my resuscitation baby, and then I have the Fisher and Paykel model resuscitation masks. The Neopuff, like all T-piece resuscitators, come with medical grade manometer and then we have a knob here for the peak inspiratory pressure. That's how we're going to set the breath for the baby. What we have here behind the door, I'm going to save that for last, but that is going to be our maximum pressure relief and we'll discuss that. When setting up the Neopuff, you have a green O2 tubing, which is going to be specific to the Neopuff. Uh, and this is green for it being O2, but it's also a reusable O2 tubing. When you look at this, you want to imagine that this would be internal within a machine if you were using something like a Panda infant warmer. But since this is a portable model, you're just going to go ahead and plug it in where it says gas inlet. That's the port for the green tubing. But again, this is reusable. If you need to clean it, go ahead and clean it as you would the Neopuff. Um, so that is perfectly acceptable. This here, the ergonomic T-piece, is disposable. So you only throw this, you throw this away, it's a one patient use type system, and this plugs into where it says gas outlet. Now the ergonomic T-piece from Fisher & Paykel is designed a little bit different than other T-pieces. Instead of looking like a letter T, like other T-pieces, it looks more like a letter Y. The reason why it's designed like that is if you look at the peep cap, it's off to an angle and it's designed to fit in your hand more effectively. The peep cap that I mentioned, located right here, is how we adjust the peak in, uh, or the positive end expiratory pressure, or other, as other people call it, the CPAP. And we do that by twisting. It's kind of like a cap on a tube of toothpaste. Also, when you look at the ergonomic T piece, it has what we call a duckbill port. It's located in between the, the uh, peep cap and the circuit. This duckbill port allows us, if a baby is intubated and we are providing resuscitation, to feed in a French five to seven size tubing in here to deliver surfactant or suction to a baby. And then on the other end uh, where the mask goes, we have a cap that allows us to set our pressures before we're ready to hook it up to the baby. Okay, so when we set up the Neopuff, we want to turn the default flows is 8 liters of flow. Now you can set the flow from 5 to 15, but default is 8 liters of flow, and that's how I have this set up. I'm using a fish pump here. Yours is probably going to be more effective, so I'm only probably getting about 4 liters of flow, but you can see it's working relatively effectively, so we're fine. But go ahead and set it to 8 liters of flow. And then what we want to do is when you set your PIP, you always want to set your PIP or your peak inspiratory pressure or the breath you're giving the baby before you set your peep. So if you notice on the back of this peep cap there is an opening and what you want to do is place your finger on the back to occlude the hole and you'll notice the needle on the jump or, or the needle on my Neopuff will jump up because I've occluded this and I'm now uh, developing pressure and we're going to determine our PIP from here. And we do that by turning this blue knob. So if I turn it to the left it'll go down and if I turn it to the right it'll go up. I'm gonna go ahead and set it at 25 centimeters of water pressure for my PIP. And when I release that it's gonna drop but you'll notice the needle does not drop down to zero because I already have a CPAP dialed in. And to dial in a CPAP you just turn this cap again, it's like a tube of toothpaste, turn it to the left and the right. If you turn it to the right it increases the CPAP. If you turn it to the left it will decrease your CPAP. I want to bring it up to five centimeters of water pressure. So we've got 25 over five, and my Neopuff is now ready to go with the baby. Now my baby here, my resuscitation baby, is designed to take um, intubation, so we can't put a mask onto it, but I will show you the mask, and then we'll switch over to intubating um, in, a, in here in a couple of minutes. Uh, we do have five recessed masks from Fisher & Paykel. They range from the smallest mask, which is 35 millimeter, this designed for micro preemies all the way down to 23 weeks, up to uh, what we have here is an extra large pediatric mask, 
and this is going to run you the size of 72 millimeters and this is designed to go up uh, it's it is based on a weight within the package insert but if it fits over a baby's face or even a child's face this is going to work for them uh, what you want to do is you want to choose a mask that will cover both the nose and the mouth uh, my baby here would range between the 35 millimeter and what is known as the 42 millimeter. So we have two micro preemie sizes available to you. I probably would go more with the 42 millimeter, but as you can see, my baby's intubated. So what I'm gonna do when I'm putting on the mask is I just wanna show you what blow by looks like. So this, or on this side, is blow by. That's simple blow by. You can place your finger at the top of the peep cap uh, to drive more air across. There's not a lot being lost. This is not necessary, but some do like to place their finger here, making sure the air goes uh, across. And if you left the mask on and was to place this over the baby's face, uh, that would give you CPAP. Now, whenever you're using the ergonomic T piece, you want to make sure that the peep cap is facing either the toes or the top of the head like that so that it fits comfortably within your hand. So if it's facing the toes of the baby or the top of the head, you can now hold the circuit, if this was top of the head like so, and occlude with your thumb like this, or if it was facing the toes, you could occlude like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and resuscitate on the baby's chest so you can visually see this, but basically it would resuscitate like that or like that. We're going to go ahead and take the mask off and put on the, it onto the intubation. So again, facing it to the top of the head or the toes, you'll notice that my needle will jump up to five centimeters of pressure, which I have it set at. Uh, make sure that the needle always jumps to what you've set or you preset the system at to make sure you have the, pripe, the proper seal. Okay, so when you resuscitate, NRP guidelines recommend uh, resuscitation count is 40 to 60 breaths per minute. So it's a waltz count, meaning you're going to breathe on one beat of a three beat count and you're going to release on beats two and three. So a waltz is one, two, three, one, two, three, or otherwise what we're going to do it is breathe two, three, breathe two, three. And it would look like this. Breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three. And you'll notice that the needle will jump up to the pip that we have set ahead of time. And it doesn't drop below the CPAP we have set ahead of time. This is really an advantage of TP circuit, that no matter how freaked out I may be, or the parents may be, or whatever the situation arises, you cannot squeeze more than 25 centimeters of water pressure if you set it to that or whatever you have it set to and it cannot drop below the five centimeters of water pressure if you have a proper seal. Now, if you ever need to go ahead and increase the CP or the uh, peak inspiratory pressure as you resuscitate, you wanna make sure you do it this way. We go breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three, breathe two, three. I went ahead and increased my PIP, but what you noticed, I never did this, where I kept my finger over the peep valve and kept the eye time very long for my peak inspiratory pressure. If you do this, then now you're running the risk of a pneuma within the baby and you're over inflating. So you always need to make sure that you maintain that count of breathe two, three, even as you increase or decrease. And again, if I needed to run in a French five, seven size tubing, I can do that into the back like so if a baby is intubated. So that is the Neopuff with resuscitation. Let me go ahead and show you the maximum pressure relief. So I always save this till for last because this is the portion that you should think about when you're not resuscitating. This is called the maximum pressure relief. Some people call it the pop-off. It's technically not a pop-off because there will be no pop-off. It is the maximum pressure you will be able to give to a child accidentally or on purpose. And the way this works is, is we've set internally within this machine uh, a maximum amount of, or basically a stoppage of, if I was to hold down this pip or hold down my occlusion knob here and turn the pip knob all the way, the needle would stop at a certain point 
because I've dialed that into my maximum pressure relief. And the way you do that is, is you open up your pip knob all the way to the right, open this door here and you'll see there's a second knob here. In order for this to get command to be able to adjust that needle, you need to have that opened all the way to the right. And then as I turn this, you'll notice that the needle turns with it. And I'm going to set that needle at 30 centimeters of water pressure. I'm going to close that door. And now when I give command back to this knob, it won't go any higher than 30 centimeters of water pressure. So that is your maximum pressure relief. Uh, this door should always remain closed and you should never use this knob during resuscitation of a baby. It is only meant as a safety mechanism. So you wanna set this up during each shift and then ignore it during the rest of the time within the shift. And that is the Neopuff. Thank you.